Son Excellence, Monsieur le Président, ses Excellences, euh, ambassadeurs africains ici présents okay. au Canada, ses Excellences, ambassadeurs et chefs de mission en Afrique du Canada, Ladies and gentlemen, we are very, very happy to have you here today in this very special occasion. Africa is with, with us today. Africa is coming to talk to their friends, Canadians. So we have a full program uh, and we have a very specific and important message that you don't want to miss. The message coming from His Excellency the champion, the leader of uh, African continental free trade. And also we have other speakers that are going to be talking to you, the leaders from Africa that are going to be talking to you directly about uh, this continental free trade agreement. Before we go on, let me just introduce myself. My name is Nola Kianza, president and CEO of Canadian Council on Africa. Our organization has been promoting trade and economic development between Canada and the continent of Africa. Uh, before I go forward, let me just introduce my colleagues from the Canadian Council on Africa that have been working behind the scene uh, in uh, preparing this um, uh, webinar. Also, I would like to recognize our colleagues from uh, AE Trade Group that have been working also with us for uh, organizing this webinar. As I said, this is a very, very important uh, webinar is uh, uh, we are full house. Uh, when we talk about Africa, we said that Africa, like a one country, well, you are going to hear from the leaders that Africa is a gigantic market. So that's what you are going to be hearing about. Today's program is going to be moderated by our uh, chairman of the board, the chairman of Canadian Council on Africa, and the champion of Africa, Benoit Lassalle. Benoit has spent all his time in Africa in many, many, many projects in Africa until today. Uh, he is uh, uh, championing projects uh, in, uh, in Africa. Uh, he is executive in many, many boards, uh, all the projects, all dealing with Africa. So we are very, very excited uh, to have uh, Benoit to be the moderator of this event today. And now I will hand over to uh, Benoit Lassalle. Thank you, uh, Nola. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome, uh, uh, Mr. President. It's a pleasure uh, to have you with us today. Uh, the president of Niger, uh, President Isufu, has is, is been a, a leader uh, of the African continent and is the leader of the African continental free trade area. So it's a great pleasure to have you with us today. Uh, as Nola said, and all the ambassadors, the African ambassadors uh, in Ottawa and all the Canadian ambassadors uh, all over Africa, uh, a warm welcome uh, this morning to participate uh, to this webinar. Uh, the Canadian Council of Africa is pleased to host this important conference in collaboration with AE Trade Group towards an integrated market in Africa and opportunity for Canadian business as part of COVID-19 economic recovery. Uh, we all know that business will never be the same. Uh, what we did pre-COVID and the uh, will, will be totally different now. And uh, the African continent uh, is now standing together, standing strong uh, as a unified market and I think this is an, an, a very important element of the post-COVID recovery. Since its creation in 2002, uh, the Canadian Council on Africa mandate has been to promote trade and economic development between Canada and the African continent. I have personally been doing this for 25 years. Uh, our, my group, we have invested in, in more than 10 countries uh, in Africa and are operating still more in more than 10 countries. We really believe that the African continent is the next place uh, and is, is the, was the past place for the past 10 years, but it will be even greater in the coming 25 years. So the Canadian Council, we organize trade mission between Canada and Africa. We're hosting African head of states who come to Canada. 
we uh, we did organize the first Canada Africa Business Summit, and has been organizing for the past seven years the delegation to mining in Daba. Mining in Daba, I've been going for 25 years. Um, I'm not sure this year uh, how it will be, uh, but it is where people meet for businesses in Africa and it is extremely, extremely important. The Canadian Council on Africa believes that the private sector development is one of the key contributors to economic development of nation, which leads eventually to well-being, peace and security. And this is extremely important that the Canadian companies participate uh, internationally uh, uh, within the development of Africa. Africa is the new frontier for business, uh, you know, with human and natural resources largely untapped. I always like to, you know, bring these numbers uh, to everybody that only one third of the Arab land of Africa is, is really cultivated. And the actual yield on this one third is about one third of the average yield around the world. So, and as this planet is, is running out of food or uh, bio food, because of course COVID also will create a big push on bio agriculture. I think the, the, the country or the, the continent that will benefit the most from this is Africa. If you look at Niger and, 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 and the Niger River, which as you know, starts in, in Guinea, comes through Mali, through the Republic of Niger. If you look on both sides of this river, you could have so much agriculture there uh, that would probably feed uh, most of Europe. As when people look at Morocco and the solar park that they have, the power plants, the solar power plant that they have in Morocco, it says that if they were to expand it, they could have energy for all of Europe. Well, it's the same for, for agriculture in Africa. Talking about mineral resources, well, Africa has been for the past 20 years, and this is why so many Canadians are there, it has been the place to go because of untapped resources. Niger and the president knows being one of them with its uranium district and its gold project, it's a very, it's an important country uh, for natural resources, but you have the same all over Africa, uh, from South Africa all the way to North Africa. Uh, there's a revolution happening at the moment in electrification of transport. It is happening. Uh, I'm sure all of you have been following the Tesla announcement on lithium, nickel, cobalt, graphite, and that is happening as we speak. And where all these natural resources are going to come from, I would say 80, 90% will come from Africa. The same thing with nuclear power. And today is not, you know, the, 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 the topic, but, you know, even the United States are saying now there'll be no solution to, the, to clean energy and shutting down the coal projects unless we adopt a very, very aggressive nuclear program. So, and again, and where will that come from? Most likely from Africa. So uh, it, the, the continent is, 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 is ready. Uh, the continent is there and it's, it's extremely important. So you are aware that some African leaders have come together to create a gigantic marketplace throughout the African continent called the African Continental Free Trade Area. It creates the single most important new market for goods and services, and it will promote the, uh, the movement of capital and people. The World Bank estimates that the, uh, the, the, this agreement uh, will create the largest free trade area in the world measured by the number of countries participating. The, uh, the, the PAC connects 1.3 billion people across you know, 55 countries with a combined domestic gross product of 3.4 trillions. It's extremely, extremely important. Canada is a friend of Africa. We've, uh, we have been for many, many years. We bring technology, we bring know-how, we bring uh, capital at, uh, as well uh, to develop Africa. And we do it in following the ESG principles, which is extremely important uh, if we, the Canadian companies want to develop abroad to follow the ESG principles. 
So today we will talk about this rare opportunity, which is the Africa continent free trade area. It is a, a, an important, important opportunity. So we'll have two panels to, uh, to discuss all of this. And of course, uh, but before we have the two panels, we will have two presentation uh, to start the discussion, but there'll be two panel. Our, the first panel uh, will be harnessing political commitment to implement this Africa continent free trade area during post COVID. So that will be the first panel. And the second panel will be mobilizing partnerships between Canada and Africa. So I really believe that we will have a very enjoyable webinar. Uh, the opportunity is now there. It's, it's, it's real for Canadian companies. And uh, with the, today, I hope that some of our Canadian colleagues will see the benefit of jumping uh, over the ocean and, and going to Africa. So I would like to introduce Mr. Mulu Alem Simu, who is the chairman and CEO of AE Trade Group. They are a privileged partner to the Canadian Council on Africa, and they are co-hosting this event with us. So please, Mr. Mulu Alem, I will turn this over to you. Thank you very much, distinguished moderator. Your Excellency, Mr. Mahmoudou Isofu, President of the Republic of Niger, champion, leader of the ASCFTA process. His Excellency, Wamikele Mane, Secretary of ASCFTA. His Excellency, Ambassador Albert Muchanga, Commissioner for Trade and Industry, African Union Commission. Distinguished ladies, in the public and private sector, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Fellow Canadians, I wish to share with you today my vision for the A Trade Group, which was nurtured here, right here in Montreal, in the city of Montreal, where I have been living with my family in the past three decades. I am thrilled to be here today in this important webinar to join with you in congratulating the African leaders and citizens for the amazing progress which is being made in concluding the second largest free trade area agreement in the world after the world trade organizations. These days, we live in a changing environment where we see more and more turn toward protectionism in the development world. At the same time, we see African leaders moving boldly in the opposite direction. Why? As we all know, trade liberalization has been a significant stimulus to economic growth and prosperity around the world. It is clear the benefit of NAFTA for Canada. That includes a wider selection of goods, increased trade volumes, increased foreign direct investment, the movement of professionals and investors across the border. The expansion of new job. This is why the ASCFTA is aiming at boosting intra-Africa trade to increase foreign direct investment, to create a wider job opportunity and a win-win opportunity. In this context, both Canadian small and medium entrepreneurs and African small and medium entrepreneurs can to leverage economic opportunities. We encourage Canadian policymakers to consider facilitating favorable trade policy for Canadian SME in pursuing inclusive and sustainable economic development and to achieve outcome that are more fair, beneficial, beneficial for all in Africa. As you may know, the African market is now growing and growing fast. We also know that the effort of the government of Canada 
in supporting the growth and development of SMEs and their ability to export products and services abroad. Canadian SMEs are the driving force for our economy here. They are largely represented in six main industries. Infrastructure, trade professionals, scientific and technical services, health care and social, and favorite the, my favorite, the fintech industries, the artificial intelligence, machine learning, cryptocurrency, blockchains. Here is the hub of those fintech technologies in Montreal. We believe the fastest way for SME to boost productivity and economic growth is to innovate. African business with innovative Canadian business partner that includes technological investment and optimizing operations, knowledge transfers as a service to turn creative ideas into innovative Canadian SMEs that partner Africa Trade Fair. Since I have been developing our program, I have worked closely with some of leading university faculties in Canada, such as Concordia University, which has an African program. And together, we have designed unique training material called Changing the Mindset for Entrepreneurs. And we are widening our partnership to include more opportunities to expand our linkage through the A Trade Group Research and Innovation Center that will be located in five regional headquarters in Africa for the A Trade Group, as well as the continental headquarter. The hub for this of our work shall remain here in Montreal, which makes sense because Montreal is a global fintech hub for research, innovation, startup, and has a robust ecosystem, which can be learned from. Educational opportunity, Africa has limitless. COVID-19 has shifted the paradigm from uniquely classroom-based learning to virtual learning. The question is how to do this. We have a prototype for a solar power laptop, which can be manufactured and distributed in Africa, resulting in digital inclusion for people in a remote area. They can connect in the internet without electricity for bandwidth usage satellite at the affordable cost. We invite the Canadian investment community to step forward and work with us to make this a reality. We have discovered that trade facilitation is a key opportunity in Africa. There are so many borders that need to be automated. There are many systems which need to be put in place quickly. And we have the know-how in Canada to work on this issue in a commercially sustainable way. We know that solar power laptop at remote border can reduce corruption and red taps, facilitate safe transit for eligible goods and allow Africa to leapfrog using technology and gain efficiency in transport and logistics, which cannot be heard of. In East Africa and across the continent, there is a vibrant culture of using technology, including mobile payment, which is a vast opportunity cross-border trade, which are currently informal, will become transparent and formal in our Sokoku platform, which will greatly improve the data on trade pattern in Africa. And this commercial intelligence can assist potential investor make a strategic decision. Working with governments in Africa can be 
can remove the perception that the continent is opaque, that procedures are not clear and decisions are not always predictable. Africa is changing and need our support as Canadians. To address this practical issue, we shall also be rewarded by learning about emerging new business models, appreciating always the partnership are included a two-way exchange. My vision is that we can see enhanced trade flow between Canada and Africa in the next five years. A practical demonstration, the ambitious plan we are putting together with Canadian Council for Africa and the fellow business in Canada are ready to be your bridge. Last but not least, I wish to express that the A Trade Group is working with all stakeholders to support the ACFTA implementation, as well as other continental priority projects. Digital inclusion and capacity building, which we launch the Sokuku Marketplace, a platform and a solar powered laptop. Financial inclusion, innovative finances, solution for small and medium entrepreneurs, women and youth. With this, within opportunity for business and financiers, creating an enabling environment, e-government services, payment systems, civil service transformations, supporting regional continental body, monitoring the implementation of the ACFT agreement. And the digital infrastructure, cloud computing services, business continuity and the disaster recovery services, inclusive approach to digital transformations, partnership with all stakeholders, including the platform economy concept. We look forward to engaging further with you following this webinar, visit our website and contact us via the information in the chat function of this webinar. Thank you for your kind attention. I look forward to listening to a distinguished speakers and panelists. Thank you. Merci uh, Moulou Alem. Merci uh, sincèrement pour votre présentation. Alors, euh, j'ai l'honneur, le, le privilège et le plaisir de vous présenter euh, notre, euh, notre speaker de, de, pour ce matin, son Excellence, Mahamadou Issoufou, le président de la République du Niger et le chef de file de la zone de libre-échange continentale africaine. J'ai personnellement le plaisir de travailler au Niger depuis euh, 22-23 ans. C'est un pays que je connais très bien et je peux vous dire que sous le leadership euh, du président, euh, le pays n'a pas connu euh, l'insécurité de la région, ce qui était un point tellement important. Euh, sa, son leadership dans la zone était sans contredit très important. Euh, le Niger est un pays avec un immense potentiel agricole avec un immense potentiel au niveau des ressources naturelles. Il est connu pour sa grande zone euh, de, de, de l'uranium dans la région de Harlit. Alors, le président euh, du Niger euh, a, a su, depuis les dernières années, diriger ce pays euh, vers, euh, vers une croissance économique, euh, dans, alors qu'il y avait quand même des situations très difficiles au niveau du prix de la commodité, surtout pour, pour l'uranium. Alors, je suis très heureux de vous le présenter ce matin. Euh, il a été le premier ministre du pays de 1993 jusqu'à 1994. Il a été le président de l'Assemblée nationale 
de 1995 à 1996, et il est aujourd'hui le président du Niger, de la République du Niger, et ça depuis le 7 avril 2011. Alors, sans euh, contredit, euh, vraiment une personne très importante pour la région de l'Afrique de l'Ouest, mais très importante pour l'Afrique dans son ensemble. Monsieur le Président, je vous cède la parole. Bien, merci, M. Benoît Lassalle, président du Conseil canadien pour l'Afrique. Mesdames et Messieurs, distingués invités, permettez-moi de saluer tous les participants à ce webinaire organisé par le groupe AI Trade et le Conseil canadien pour l'Afrique sur le thème « Vers un marché intégré en Afrique » une opportunité pour les entreprises canadiennes dans le cadre de la reprise économique post-COVID-19. Cette rencontre virtuelle se tient dans un contexte africain doublement favorable, car tous les pays africains élaborent leur plan de relance post-COVID-19 d'une part, et d'autre part, le commerce intra-africain s'apprête à bénéficier des immenses avantages induits par le démarrage en janvier 2021 des transactions commerciales dans le cadre de la zone de libre-échange continentale africaine. Il s'agit de la première rencontre sur la relance post-COVID-19 organisée entre les hommes d'affaires africains et leurs homologues d'un autre continent. Tous doivent pouvoir tirer le meilleur parti des opportunités qu'offre la relance post-Covid et la zone de libre-échange continentale africaine. Mesdames et Messieurs, l'impact de la COVID-19 sur la santé et l'activité économique des citoyens du continent africain a été dramatique. Sur le plan économique, le continent est en récession avec un taux de croissance économique négatif de 2,1 à 5,1 selon la Banque mondiale. La COVID-19 a aussi eu un effet négatif par rapport à la mise en œuvre des plans, programmes et projets de l'agenda 2063 de l'Union africaine. Ces plans, programmes et projets, de nature à transformer l'économie africaine, concernent tous les secteurs et forme un tout cohérent dans la perspective de renforcer l'intégration régionale et atteindre les objectifs de l'agenda 2063. Je citerai pour rappel les plans et programmes suivants. La zone de libre-échange continentale africaine, naturellement. Ensuite, il y a le plan d'action pour le développement industriel accéléré de l'Afrique, il y a le programme de développement des infrastructures en Afrique, qu'elles soient routières, ferroviaires, énergétiques, de télécommunications. Il y a le programme détaillé de développement de l'Afrique, de l'agriculture en Afrique. Tantôt, M. Lassalle parlait de l'immensité des terres arables africaines qui ne sont malheureusement pas mises en valeur. Donc, dans le cadre de ces plans-là, ces terres vont être mises en valeur. La vision minière africaine. Ensuite, il y a le plan d'action pour l'intensification du commerce intra-africain. Tous ces plans, programmes et projets sont, je crois, autant d'opportunités d'investissement pour les entreprises canadiennes. Nous fondons beaucoup d'espoir dans la découverte prochaine d'un ou plusieurs vaccins afin d'accélérer la mise en œuvre de ces plans, programmes et projets. Pour les financer, l'Afrique a besoin de ressources financières importantes. Ces ressources proviendront bien sûr des efforts internes de mobilisation des ressources fiscales et de l'épargne, ainsi que des appuis des institutions internationales bilatérales et multilatérales et des investissements directs étrangers. Au total, le continent africain, et c'est une évaluation qui a été faite dans le cadre des ODD, a besoin de 600 milliards d'investissements par an d'ici 2030. Pour l'année 2020, les pays africains bénéficient d'un moratoire sur la dette afin de continuer 
à fournir des services de santé de base tout en travaillant à l'élaboration des plans de relance de leurs économies. Manifestement, un simple moratoire sur la dette est loin d'être suffisant. L'Afrique ne pourra réaliser ses ambitions légitimes que dans le cadre d'une nouvelle gouvernance politique et économique mondiale. Alors, le choc provoqué par la COVID-19 est-il suffisant pour pousser la communauté internationale à mettre en place un nouveau paradigme, une nouvelle gouvernance politique et économique mondiale Je crois que oui. Et, mesdames et messieurs, les bons résultats obtenus par l'Afrique dans la gestion solidaire de la COVID-19 montrent bien que l'unité fait la force. C'est un argument supplémentaire pour accélérer la mise en œuvre de la zone de libre-échange continentale africaine. La première phase de ce projet porte sur la libéralisation du commerce des marchandises et des services et sur le règlement des différends. Cette première phase a été officiellement lancée le 7 juillet 2019 à Niamey. L'installation officielle du secrétariat de la zone de libre-échange continentale africaine a eu lieu, comme vous le savez, à Accra en septembre 2020. Les transactions commerciales dans le cadre de la zone débuteront en janvier 2020. Elles devraient débuter en juin 2020. Mais compte de la COVID, on a été obligé de reporter le démarrage au mois de janvier 2021. La deuxième phase de la zone de libre-échange continentale africaine concerne les investissements, la concurrence et la propriété intellectuelle. Cette phase est en cours de négociation. Avec la zone de libre-échange continentale africaine, notamment l'accord sur les investissements, les petites, moyennes et grandes entreprises canadiennes pourront investir dans les pays qui ont ratifié l'accord de la zone de libre-échange continentale africaine. À terme, cela incluera les 55 pays d'Afrique ayant une population de près de 1,3 milliard de personnes et un PIB combiné de 3 500 milliards de dollars. Je voudrais souligner que toutes les études montrent que la zone de libre-échange continentale africaine offrira d'importants gains économiques. Ainsi, le Fonds monétaire international estime que les pays africains pourraient enregistrer 5 points de PIB en plus grâce à la réduction des barrières commerciales et également enregistrer des gains de bien-être pouvant atteindre 2,1%. Le commerce intra-africain augmenterait de 80%. Mesdames et messieurs, l'Afrique est sur le point d'offrir aux investisseurs un marché unique. Elle aspire à une nouvelle vision de ses relations commerciales et d'investissement avec ses partenaires extérieurs. Je constate avec plaisir qu'un nouveau partenariat est en train de s'établir entre le Canada et l'Afrique. Je relève que les petites et moyennes entreprises qui en représentent 55 sont le moteur de l'économie canadienne. Elles sont vitales pour assurer la prospérité commerciale du Canada et créer les conditions d'un accès véritable et promoteur à la zone de libre-échange continentale africaine. Les entreprises canadiennes sont bien placées pour importer des produits fabriqués en Afrique pour le marché canadien et mondial et pour fournir les équipements et technologies dont l'Afrique a besoin. Un partenariat gagnant-gagnant est à notre portée. Le marché en ligne de la zone de libre-échange continentale africaine Go Live Plus Sokoku du groupe AI Trade est une excellente opportunité pour nous tous. Cette initiative incarne un esprit d'entreprise dynamique en Afrique, principalement pour les femmes et les jeunes. Pour assurer son succès, les femmes et les jeunes d'Afrique ont besoin de compétences, d'un transfert de technologie et d'une infrastructure matérielle et immatérielle. L'approche inclusive du groupe AI Trade dans les affaires fait de lui un partenaire idéal pour les gouvernements africains et les entreprises canadiennes en travaillant à la création d'un écosystème de qualité permettant 
au PME de prospérer dans l'environnement de la COVID et post-COVID. Mesdames et messieurs, les gouvernements africains font de gros efforts pour améliorer le climat des affaires. Ces efforts doivent se poursuivre et s'amplifier à l'avenir. En septembre 2021, se tiendra à Kigali, au Rwanda, la deuxième foire commerciale intra-africaine co-organisée par l'Union africaine, la Banque africaine d'import-export et le gouvernement du Rwanda. En espérant qu'à ce moment, la mobilité sera plus facile pour nous tous, j'exprime le souhait d'une participation massive des investisseurs et des sociétés de capital et risque du Canada à cet important événement continental. J'encourage le gouvernement canadien à aider et à soutenir les entreprises canadiennes pour faire du commerce avec l'Afrique dans le cadre des efforts de reprise. Dans cet élan, je crois qu'une redéfinition de notre relation en matière d'aide au commerce devrait aller de l'avant, sachant que l'Afrique a encore besoin d'une attention toute particulière dans un certain nombre de domaines afin d'atteindre les objectifs du développement durable. Je voudrais pour conclure mon propos réaffirmer que les gouvernements africains sont impatients de travailler avec le gouvernement et le secteur privé canadien et à leur nom, je vous invite à saisir les opportunités offertes par la zone de libre-échange continentale africaine. Vive le partenariat Afrique-Canada. Je vous remercie de votre aimable attention. Merci beaucoup. Excellence, euh, merci pour euh, ces mots très précis, très clairs, qui, euh, qui appuient l'initiative que vous avez euh, vraiment euh, dirigée. Euh, je crois que c'est vraiment très important et votre message est très clair pour les, 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 les entrepreneurs, les hommes d'affaires, les femmes d'affaires, les sociétés canadiennes et le gouvernement canadien d'être très présent sur l'Afrique. Euh, je vous en remercie. Euh, et moi, je témoigne de votre pays. Je, je crois qu'il y a tellement un grand potentiel. Peut-être que Carole Robert se, ira au, au, au Niger, euh, dans, dans, dans la vallée où il y a le fleuve qui coule toute l'année et toutes ces terres qui sont un peu cultivées, mais qui pourraient être tellement, tellement cultivées d'une façon plus industrielle, alors qu'aujourd'hui, c'est plus de la survie pour les, 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 les gens qui, qui vivent le long du, du, du fleuve. Mais ce fleuve qui coule toute l'année a un potentiel incroyable, incroyable. Et euh, comme on sait, l'eau vient des hautes, de la haute Guinée. Euh, il, il pleut là-bas tout le temps, donc il n'y aura jamais de sécheresse. Alors, bon, ceci dit, Monsieur le Président, c'est toujours un plaisir de, de, de vous avoir. Euh, de, je, je connais votre grande vision pour le pays, pour, pour, la, pour, le, pour, le, pour la région et pour le, pour le continent. Euh, euh, au nom du Conseil canadien pour l'Afrique, je vous remercie de nous avoir accordé du temps. C'est tellement, euh, vous avez tellement un horaire qui est chargé, je le sais. Alors, c'est un plaisir de vous avoir et j'espère que tous les gens euh, ont, ont bien, bien saisi cette grande ouverture que l'Afrique que a pour les sociétés canadiennes. Merci énormément. Alors, ceci nous amène donc euh, à notre premier panel qui est, uh, and I will switch back to English, we're going to our panel number one, which is harnessing political commitment to implement the uh, Africa continental free trade area during the post COVID-19 era. The president was so uh, clear about the effect of COVID on Africa. It is dramatic uh, the, uh, and, and sad because the continent was really running, many countries were running on double digit growth And all of a sudden, this, this disease just puts every, everything back. And um, it's, it's uh, but it, there is the opportunity then to come in and, and to try to, to you know, participate in, in the new uh, growth profile that Africa will have. So uh, that being said, this uh, first panel uh, will be uh, uh, moderated by Mrs. Treasure Mapanga. Um, uh, Treasure is, is, has de 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 dedicated her career uh, towards uh, poverty reduction, enabling uh, environment for private sector development, trade investment, industrial development. 
She has led major programs in the sphere of capacity development, trade-related, capacity building, and investment promotion, and people-centered development. She has served as a leader and as an advisor to government, public enterprise, intergovernmental organization, uh, and private sector. I mean, and I could go on. There's another full page of her background. It is very, very impressive. But uh, I don't think uh, we need to do this. I will turn it over to you, Treasurer, and to your panel uh, to start the discussion on harnessing political commitment to implement the agreement during the post-COVID-19 era. Treasurer, it, I turn this over to you. Uh, thank you very much um, for that um, very generous and warm uh, welcome and introduction. Um, it is my honor and pleasure to be with you um, at this distinguished uh, uh, webinar. And may I say good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all our participants who are joining us from different time zones. Um, I am honored to uh, basically facilitate a very strategic uh, conversation um, at the best time that one could have wished for. Because indeed, um, we have all heard and have been inspired by the um, wonderful statements that we have received that demonstrate that Africa and Canada are very well positioned to do something different. And for this panel that I'm also very privileged to facilitate, I have three eminent leaders who um, are going to share with us their insights and views about the topic, which um, basically um, is, is about the, the question about what is our leadership on the continent doing to ensure that we move beyond just um, negotiating an impressive agreement, signing it, uh, ratifying it, but now the next step, which is the operational part. And, um, I'm also reminded that we are speaking at a time when the global economy is in turmoil and um, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And yet the creation of this vast market in Africa is an opportunity that is definitely um, uh, clearly positioned to assist both Africans and also partners like Canada from around the world. We are talking about opportunities to diversify exports, accelerate growth, attract foreign direct investment. Indeed, many of these opportunities have already been shared with us. So what is it that our leaders that are on this panel think about what remains to be done? What are the opportunities and what are the challenges? Let me start, uh, ladies and gentlemen, by first of all unveiling who is joining us on this panel and how we're going to run this session of 45 minutes. Indeed, we have three eminent leaders. In many respects, I'm humbled because they do not need any introduction. They are well known to all of you. They have probably spoken to this particular platform um, very recently in the past. However, it's my honor to um, welcome them and to indicate that we will be having a conversation that lasts for 45 minutes. However, one of our panelists, the Secretary General of the African Continental Free Trade Area Secretariat, is unfortunately not able to remain with us throughout the entire session. So with your permission, um, I'm going to request him uh, to take the floor and share with us his perspectives on the topic. And then, um, as then, what I will then do is turn to the two distinguished speakers. That is now the um, um, Commissioner for Trade and Industry, Ambassador Albert Muchanga, and also the Vice President for Regional Integration and Business Delivery, uh, Delivery at the African Development Bank. That is Mr. Khaled Sharif. And I want to introduce each speaker in turn and to do so appropriately. But due to the interest of time, I will now just turn my attention to the AFCFTA Secretary General. Ladies and gentlemen, this is, I'm very honored to present a dynamic leader of the newly established African Continental Free Trade Area Secretariat, which you, as you know, is hosted by the Republic of Ghana. Uh, he is one of the architects of the agreement that we have been talking about so highly. 
and he has contributed uh, significantly to various regional integration processes on the continent. And he has also represented um, South Africa at the World Trade Organization. And indeed, he is one person that I'm privileged to say stands out as um, in terms of his vision and leadership for the organization that he's heading. And we want to hear more from him about that today. Indeed, may I ask you, Your Excellency, uh, Wamkele Mene, to take the floor and to share your insights about what you see as the key imperatives on harnessing political in, in, uh, commitment to implement the AFCFTA at this particular moment, which is as we are working towards getting out of the COVID-19 pandemic. I thank you. Please, your welcome. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, uh, Madam Moderator, and thank you for your for your kind words to to me uh, personally. Um, it's a pleasure for me to join uh, you and um, uh, the um, the other panelists. Um, my very sincere apologies. I I have to um, escape in about 10, uh, 10 minutes uh, due to another commitment that. Um, uh, that I unfortunately am not able to, to um, escape. Um, so I am very grateful for the opportunity to, um, to, to have this discussion. We are really truly as Africa, we are at a moment um, uh, that could potentially be transformative for Africa's economic development. We have a trade agreement that um, was negotiated over a period of about four to five years, um, a trade agreement that is whose scope is very comprehensive. It is going to cover trade in goods, trade in services, um, intellectual property rights, uh, um, competition and investment. And our responsibility as the secretariat is uh, to assist uh, member states in implementing their obligations under the agreement and in fulfilling the objective of uh, the heads of states of uh, ensuring that we have an integrated market um, in Africa. And today, as things stand, we have um, uh, out of 55 countries, we have 54 countries that have signed the agreement. Um, we have 28 countries that have ratified the agreement and deposited there are instruments of ratification. Um, there may be four more uh, instruments of ratification that will be deposited in the near future uh, because we want this agreement in its implementation to be universal uh, within the context of, um, of Africa. It is the first time that we have a, a magnitude of uh, um, market integration of this magnitude and, and in such a, uh, um, a rapid uh, uh, period of time. And our objectives are simple. One, as I say, um, market integration in the implementation of the agreement so that we overcome the smallness of our national economies. We overcome uh, challenges related to economies of scale and that we have ultimately a single rule book for trade and investment. The second objective is to make sure that um, we are able to expedite the establishment of regional value chains uh, in Africa, that we enhance Africa's uh, uh, um, industrial development capacity, which in light of COVID-19 um, has been uh, exposed as, um, as relatively uh, uh, weak compared to other regions of the world. It is a long-standing objective of um, the African Union, and there are, there are various policies uh, that are there uh, uh, to ensure that we, we take measures to uh, uh, enhance Africa's industrial development capacity. The difference now is that we have a, legal, a legally binding instrument and that places an obligation on all of us as we implement this agreement to move uh, quickly and to identify regional value chains and to implement those regional value chains, which will open up opportunities for investors, um, which will open up um, opportunities for investors in Africa 
and for investors um, outside of uh, the African continent. And so our mandate uh, um, as, as the Secretariat is to ensure that, um, that the ideals and that are uh, enumerated in the agreement and the objectives of an integrated market are met um, and that our, our, this, the systems that we have designed to ensure that um, we live up to our obligations, such as dispute settlement, to ensure that the dispute settlement or mechanism of the AFCFTA, that it is operationalized so that we develop our own um, jurisprudence over time uh, in Africa. And so that over time, uh, we build confidence of our own investors for resolving disputes that are covered by the scope of the agreement. We looked at um, the, the um, uh, we looked at various models from around the world for dispute settlement. We looked at uh, various free trade agreements and what they have to say about dispute settlement. We looked at uh, the New York Convention. We looked at ICC rules. We looked at uh, the WTO's understanding on dispute settlement. And we designed what we believe is a, um, a world uh, um, uh, international best practice um, model for dispute settlement. Of course, the test will be in its application. Of course, the test will be um, uh, the extent to which uh, we as, uh, as African state parties, the extent to which we adhere uh, to its outcomes as a dispute settlement mechanism that we have uh, created. But we believe that it will give investors confidence that Africa is open for business, that Africa is open for investment, and that Africa is, is uh, committed to uh, resolving disputes that arise out of a trade agreement, resolving those disputes um, through rules that are predetermined and, uh, uh, and that its outcomes will have integrity and binding uh, um, force. The last observation I would make in the, in the short time that unfortunately um, I, I have with you, the last observation is that um, Africa is, is on the cusp of, um, uh, certainly on the cusp of uh, achieving something that I think uh, many, many people never thought would be achievable. We are now going to have, when on all uh, countries have ratified the agreement, we will have uh, by far the largest free trade area in the world. And we will have by far the largest combined market, one of the largest combined markets in the world. By 2035, we will have a market of um, a combined consumer spending and business spending combined uh, GDP of close to $7 trillion. We have a young uh, growing uh, population. We have a middle class that is growing with increasing uh, purchasing uh, uh, power. And so Africa is uh, positioning herself as a very, very compelling um, investment market, particularly in areas uh, uh, such as e-commerce, uh, which I believe will be uh, discussed uh, today in very, very interesting areas uh, such as uh, uh, digital trade. We have an opportunity through this agreement to negotiate uh, disciplines or rules on uh, digital trade that will be forward looking, that will position Africa very, very well for the fourth industrial revolution we will have to address issues such as uh, the Internet of Things, big data, additive printing, and a range of other challenges and disruptors of the fourth industrial revolution. So we are in a very exciting phase um, in Africa in the sense that we are able, we can have a trade, uh, a digital trade platform that is informed by the needs of the modern day economy. Um, and COVID-19 has demonstrated that um, e-commerce, e-commerce is now at the center of economic activity globally. 
And we now as Africans have an opportunity to embrace these digital platforms to ensure that in the implementation of this agreement, that it is accessible to small medium enterprises, to the informal sector, as well as to the African um, multinational corporations. So we have a massive challenge ahead of us, but we see this as an opportunity to enhance Africa's investment uh, climate. So I thank you very much. And my apologies again for not, a, not being able to uh, remain with you for, for the rest of the session. Thank you very much, Madrid. Um, thank you very much for um, your message and very inspiring uh, points that you have raised. Um, I think that um, we understand perfectly that you cannot stay with us, but you have set the, the, the scene perfectly for the discussion that we are going to have. Um, and I want to thank you um, for being able to join us. And I also want to now thank and recognize the two um, panelists that will be with us. And uh, may I start, first of all, um, by just um, in introducing uh, to you officially um, the Commissioner for Trade and Industry, His Excellency, um, Ambassador Albert Mochanga. I think that he is definitely somebody that um, has been uh, very active um, working as a friend of Canada, is known to you, but I just want to just say for those of you who may not know him, um, previously he was elected as the Commissioner for Trade and Industry in January 2017. Um, uh, for a four-year term, and he took up his post on the 15th of March. Uh, he has previously worked in the Zambian civil service at home and abroad, including the Secretariat of the Southern African Development Community. And he is somebody who has worked throughout his career with ease on technical, professional leadership and political levels. He has brought, um, and I'm a witness because he was my boss, um, uh, as a spirit and an and experience to the Department of Trade and Industry, which has um, really um, enabled the department to focus on promotion of intergovernmental relations, engagement with the private sector, as well as promotion of regional integration and cooperation as levers for sustainable development. Indeed, his passion for creating value uh, from all his official engagements um, definitely precede him. And I believe that we're really honored to have him here with us to give us his insights and thoughts at this important juncture on how the political commitment that we are looking forward to catapulting the implementation process. How is it going? What are the issues? Um, what opportunities are there, especially for the Canadian investors that are looking with interest at the changes that are taking place in Africa at this time. And I want to just say finally that Commissioner Mochanga will be remembered for many things um, throughout his career, but I believe that when it comes to the advocacy that he has um, rolled out under the leadership of the President of Niger for the speediest signature and ratification of the agreement, is really something that has gone down as a historical in the AU. But we want to also recognize, and I think he will also share more about this, that at the end of the day, this is just the beginning. So Commissioner Muchanga, I want to welcome you and ask you to share with us your thoughts. Um, what is the process that we're talking about? Where are we in terms of rolling out? Um, the negotiations, if we're talking about operationalization, what does that mean in terms of timeframes and the, and what can the private sector expect um, going forward? Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, moderator and director. It's good to see you again and greetings. Uh, it's afternoon from uh, Tsababa and this morning in uh, Canada. Uh, certainly, I'm very, very happy to be here. And I'm going to inherit the salutations that have been made so that I do not uh, repeat myself. And I would like to begin by thanking His Excellency, Mr. Yusuf Mahamadou, the President of the Republic of Niger, 
and leader of the African continental free trade area for the guidance that he has given to us during his opening address. His visionary leadership of the African continental free trade area has transformed Africa into a continent of hope and opportunity. And that is going to portend very well for the prosperity of the continent. In the same vein, I congratulate the Africa E Trade Group and the Canadian Council on Africa for organizing this important webinar. This particular panel discussion is very timely and pertinent. I say so because harnessing political commitment to implement the agreement established with the African continental free trade area in the post COVID-19 era addresses what needs to be done for Africa to create a future. And this should be a future of progress even during the post COVID-19 era. It also means we are not afraid to face the future and courage is one of the hallmarks of leadership. Furthermore, it means we are ready to face the emerging crisis. How leaders behave during a crisis defines their competencies as leaders. For a visionary leader, every crisis has opportunities within it. And those opportunities are harnessed to make society adjust to a better future. And it is in this spirit that I thank the Africa E-Trade Group and the Canadian Council on Africa for choosing this topic. Before addressing the topic in detail, let me briefly state where we are in this era of the COVID-19 pandemic. The basic fact before us that life as we knew it has changed and this is possibly forever. Working from home and virtual meetings now dominate official engagements. Infections, disruption, recovery, and resilience are now in common usage when we are talking to each other. Let me say that infections are everyday occurrences and they are rising vis-a-vis -vis the COVID-19 pandemic. Africa, like the rest of the world, has not been spared by the COVID-19 pandemic. According to data from the Africa Centers for Disease Control, and prevention released on the 2nd of October this year, the 55 African Union member states have reported cases of 1,488,488 of COVID infections, out of which there has been 36,372 people dying and 1,230,644 recoveries. Africa has also its share of disruptions, government restrictions and shutdowns implemented on the continent to curb the disease have disrupted critical global, regional and domestic value and supply chains. Consequently, Domestic and international trade flows have been disrupted and sometimes very severely. The impact on livelihoods and business have been adverse with many company closures. In the face of company closures, unemployment has surged and with it increased poverty levels. At the macroeconomic level, 
Africa will this year undergo a recession, the first time in 25 years. This comes against the background of a huge debt burden, an external debt burden that bring challenges in making payments and repayments on time and in full. And this is where the African continental free trade era comes in. It is a strategic platform for recovery, growth, sustainable development, and building resilience in the post-COVID-19 era. You heard it from the leader of the African continental free trade area, the president of Niger, His Excellency, Mr. Isu Mohamedou. From his message, it came out very clearly that African leaders are fully committed to make the African continental free trade area work in the post-COVID-19 era and deliver tangible benefits to all Africans. It is this respect that we are going to have an extraordinary session of the Assembly of the African Union Heads of State and Government on 5th December this year, where we are expected to submit to our leaders a comprehensive report stating the work on rules origin, schedules of concessions on tariff in, uh, on trade in goods, and schedules of specific commitments in trade in services that it has been completed. This completed work will be handed over to the Secretary General of the African Continental Free Trade Area at the Extraordinary Summit so that he can use it as he implements the agreement establishing the African Continental Free Trade Area effective 1st of January 2021. During the same occasion, the African Union will hand over to the Secretary General of the African Continental Free Trade Area the online mechanism on monitoring, reporting, and elimination of non tariff barriers. This instrument is fully operational and can be found at www.tradebarriers. Dot Africa. From this, it is clear that the momentum to finalize outstanding work is very dynamic. And this is a reflection of strong political commitment. With this spirit, seven meetings of the negotiation forum of the African continental free trade area senior trade officials and the African Union ministers of trade will be held at intervals from next Monday, 12th of October to 30th November this year. While the African Union member states make policies, rules and regulations, the players in the African continental free trade area market will be the private sector. In this connection, African ministers, senior trade officials, and the African Union Commission, the Secretariat of the African Continental Free Trade Area, and regional economic communities, together with our strategic partners, will meet the private sector representatives on 30th of November this year. The conversation at that meeting will be two way. On our part, we shall demonstrate to the private sector our full readiness for the start of trading under the African continental free trade area on 1st of January, 2021. On their part, we expect the private sector to tell us their readiness to scale up trade and investments in the African continental free trade area. Earlier, or starting on 1st of January, 2021. In addition to this, we shall have the second edition of the African Continental Free Trade Area Business Forum just before the Extraordinary Summit to facilitate 
business to government networking and business to business networking and transacting. There are also national and regional level preparations for the start of trading under the African continental trade area. At the national level, all African Union member states are working on producing trade documents based on a template with appropriate security features. And this template is provided for in the agreement establishing the African continental free trade area. These trade documents will be distributed all the trading points in each national territory. There will also be a meeting of directors general of customs to familiarize themselves with the trading documents. Member states are also sensitizing their respective business private sectors on the state on the trade and investment opportunities offered by the African continental free trade area. At the regional level, we, together with the Secretariat of the African continental free trade area, are sensitizing the regional economic communities as building blocks to continental economic integration to start featuring the logo of the African continental free trade area in their trade documents. This will rapidly facilitate inter-regional trade. This will be good because a huge segment of intra-African trade is currently composed of intra-regional trade. Trading across regions will lead us a step further in our vision of creating an integrated African market, which is the main focus of this webinar. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is where we are. There is strong political commitment. And to capstone all this, we together with the Secretariat of the African Continent of Red Area, will pair up countries in such a way that the rollout of trade under the continent of Red Area will take place across the length and width of Africa on 1st of January. 2021. There are numerous opportunities that will emerge when the African continent of Richard area is rolled out on 1st January 2021. I'll briefly outline a few of these opportunities. First, the market offers a huge, the market offers huge opportunities with high rates of return for African pension funds and sovereign wealth funds uh, when they increase their investments across Africa. When foreign capital left Africa at the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, most of it went into gold holdings. And it is not expected to massively return to Africa immediately there's a vaccine to treat COVID-19 infections. In this light, we look up to the African private sector, pension funds, and sovereign wealth funds to fill the vacuum. Once they do that, foreign capital will return to Africa because Africa offers one of the most promising markets around the world in the next 20 years or more on account of a young population and a growing middle class. Building on this, I encourage Canadian investors and the African diaspora in Canada to take advantage of an integrated market, which will be the largest free trade area since the formation of the World Trade Organization in 1995. And this is a market of 1.27 billion consumers, expected to be 1.7 billion consumers by 2030. The second opportunity is that the African continent of free trade area offers a huge opportunity to actualize inclusive industrialization and with it, productive transformation, export diversification, improvement of quality infrastructure, as well as adoption of the made in Africa standard, among others. This will be anchored on the development of regional value chains 
And since our focus is on inclusive industrialization, we are collaborating with the United Nations Industrial Development Organization on a regional value chain mapping exercise. Once this is completed, and our target is that it should be done by November this year, we'll be able to draw to know what each and every African country can manufacture at either intermediate or final product levels and export to the rest of Africa. With this inclusiveness, there will be enhanced buy-in by ordinary Africans for the uh, African continental free trade area. As part of the process of demonstrating political commitment towards the African continental free trade area, this year's Assembly of the African Union Heads of State and Government gave us a mandate to facilitate negotiation of a protocol on e-commerce and the digital trade. E-commerce has been growing rapidly since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic and is expected to grow faster once there is a, a regulatory framework. The Afra E-Trade Group is already active in this area. At one level, the group has an operating e-commerce platform called Sokuku or Common Market, which was launched this year during Africa Integration Day. I'm very confident that the platform will enable millions of African micro, small, mid and medium enterprises to trade among themselves and the rest of the world. At the other level, the Africa E-Trade Group and other strategic partners are collaborating with us in organizing the African Union Youth Startup Competition. This competition aims at sponsoring 150 African talented and innovative startups to attend the second Inter-African Trade Fair scheduled to take place in September 2021. And we also use that opportunity to facilitate their networking with the joint venture capital firms in order to enable them have financing available to grow their businesses. In this respect, the competition will play an important role in unleashing the innovative spirit and talent of young Africans. As I conclude, let me say that Canada should be proud for providing fertile ground for the incubation of the Africa E-Trade Group, which is now being rolled out the continent as evidenced by the fact that the, act, the chief operating officer is based in Africa, in addition to there being regional offices across Africa. And as we are told by the chairperson, there's going to be a continental headquarters. Let me also acknowledge the support from the Canadian government for the African continental free trade area through funds provided to the African Trade Policy Center or ATPC. What is also not with in this support is the strong focus on mainstreaming gender in the African continental free trade area. Through this support, the, Africa, uh, the ATC, ATPC has been able to provide the much needed advisory services to the African Union Commission and member states. And this support is aimed at advancing the negotiations and building momentum to deliver an integrated market in Africa on 1st of January, 2021. I'll stop here and thank you very much for your kind attention. Um, thank you very much, Commissioner, for your very comprehensive statement. I think everybody now has a clarity on the status of the negotiations and what is expected to happen um, at each stage. And I think also um, under, underscoring the importance of the AFCFTA as a strategy to emerge out of COVID-19, but also um, providing opportunities, not only to investors on the continent, but also to investors in Canada and beyond. So we thank you for that. I want to also um, now turn to um, our next distinguished panelist and speaker, um, Mr. Khaled Sharif, who is the vice president 
uh, responsible for regional integration and business delivery at the African Development Bank. Mr. Sharif is um, indeed um, joining us um, to basically share with us um, from his vast experience what he thinks about the, the readiness for us to harness the political commitment to implement the AFCFTA in this post-COVID era. Um, I will be brief because of time, but I think he's a highly respected and experienced economist and manager with more than 25 years experience at the World Bank. He has also um, been instrumental on work developing um, strategies, programs, and, um, and, and funding mechanisms for regional integration, as well as um, supporting um, the um, various uh, areas of uh, the operations of the bank in terms of their regional offices. Mr. Sharif, I want to thank you for um, being with us today. I think you have listened um, carefully to the statements made by your colleagues from the African Union. We know the African Development Bank is a strategic partner of the African Union, working in tandem on the uh, key agenda issues. But what I'd like you to share with us today um, in your role as the leader for the regional integration portfolio um, at the African Development Bank, what are the specific opportunities that um, we can, uh, that you are seeing for multilateral institutions like yourself, for investors, and for um, basically for Canadian um, uh, uh, investors who are looking at the continent with inter renewed interest at this time? Well, thank you very much, Chair, and uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, delegates and participants, for, for having me. Uh, so to, to get to that question, uh, let me begin first by uh, uh, positioning the discussion around uh, the, the uh, challenges that, that Africa is facing with regards to, to COVID-19 uh, and the rebound it, it, it is going to need from COVID-19, which coincides with the implementation of the African Continental Free Trade uh, Agreement. So the, the challenges that the continents uh, are facing are very similar to what other continents are facing. So uh, we, we have been lucky uh, of the 55 countries in Africa with the exceptions of, of three countries to have pretty much avoided uh, serious uh, health uh, uh, outcomes from COVID-19, but the economic fallout has been substantial. We have six countries or 55 uh, uh, regional member countries that, that uh, depend on oil, for example, as their primary export. And of those six countries, four of them, uh, oil exports represent 70% of their total revenues. So of mm -hmm. course, for those countries, uh, they are now in, in serious fiscal distress and has been alluded to, those countries are also uh, now struggling to make uh, debt payments to both multilaterals and bilaterals. Uh, and uh, this is a particular challenge for those countries. Obviously, countries in, in Africa that are net oil uh, importers or exporters of, of, of gold bullion are in a much better position uh, as, as, as uh, commodity markets uh, play out. So uh, commodity prices for key exports for the continent have also put certain uh, parts of, of, of the continent in, in major distress. So for example, coffee beans and cocoa bean prices are at their lowest peg in over a decade. And this obviously impacts West Africa in particular, that represents about 60% of overall coffee and, and cocoa exports combined worldwide. Uh, workers remittances have fallen off, which several countries depend on uh, as a primary source of foreign exchange. Um, Regional trade borders are closed in the Southern African region, which obviously has a significant impact on the transfer of wealth across countries. This has come as a result of uh, uh, the concern over COVID being transmitted across borders. Uh, we are also looking at a situation where certain countries are struggling to make their wage payments for, for, for government employees their pension payments, uh, they're struggling with debt default. Uh, we are looking at problematic uh, uh, multilateral and bilateral debt payments requiring rescheduling. And probably worth noting also is uh, state-owned enterprises across uh, different countries are also struggling, some of them in uh, national, some of them being national airlines, 
uh, and the private sector obviously uh, is also struggling with lockdowns uh, across the board. It is in this context that to rebound from COVID-19, uh, we obviously will be doing that simultaneously with the, with the rollout of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. And obviously for, for, for Africa, the AFC uh, FTA is a crucial uh, instrument that can bring all of our 55 member countries, uh, member states of the African Union together to create a common market uh, that will encompass uh, over 1.2 billion people. Now, this also comes at a time where there is a very large growing middle class in the African continent uh, with a combined GDP across our 55 countries of $3.4 trillion. However, having said that, uh, of our 55 countries, resilience is a particular issue. We have 21 countries that depend on three primary exports, just three. And when commodity exports, com commodity markets uh, adversely affect those exports, they, these, these countries go into serious economic decline. Uh, and this is why the African continent is projecting uh, growth this year, uh, given the COVID implications for the macro economy of, of the African continent to be uh, GDP growth to be minus 1.7 to 3.4%. We also have eight of our countries in, in, in Africa of our 55 uh, that, that um, have GDP uh, of less than, than $80 billion. Very, very small uh, economies, some of them being island states. And this is why the African Continental Free Trade Agreement will bring to them the potential for growth across borders that they may not be able to generate on their own. But we also have 14 countries uh, across the African continent where people live off less than $2 a day. And we have 36 countries where people live off less than $5 a day. Now, why is this substantially important? If you will all remember, uh, you know, labor demand is a derived demand, derived from the demand for goods and services. So. If I have a country where uh, the, the, the majority of the populace are living hand to mouth, uh, their GDP per capita is about $2 a day, their mm -hmm. consumption is next to none, their disposable income is next to none. If they don't demand goods and services because they don't have the disposable income, there is no signal to the private sector, domestic or foreign, to invest. And when you don't have the signal for the private sector to invest, you don't have a vehicle for creating uh, employment because labor is a derived demand, derived from the demand for goods and services. So this is why in roughly 11 of our 55 countries across the continent, the kind of investment that we see is foreign direct investment that's in the area of extractives. They are not there to make shoes or, 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 or suits or ties for the, for, for the general populace. They're there to extract the mineral wealth of the continent to export it to where the wealth is, which is outside the African continent. So wealth creation is a huge challenge for the African continent. And this is why the African Continental Free Trade Agreement is absolutely, absolutely essential. Because unless we can find a vehicle for creating wealth, which is obviously completely dependent on creating regional value chains, on developing economies of scale in countries where you have comparative advantage, is, is also absolutely essential for, for the continent. We need a continent that will focus more on import substitution. I mean, it is unfortunate that the African continent imports roughly about $200 billion worth of foodstuffs from outside the African continent, when at least it can be fully self-sufficient in, in that area. And obviously uh, we are challenged with a continent where labor mobility has to be a priority. Uh, property rights, uh, the ability to own, to own land uh, across the continent, whether you are a citizen of, 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 of one country to be able to purchase land and to operate in that other country has to be among the mainstays of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. And this is obviously what the, uh, the, this, this work is, is, is intending to do and is essential. So imagine, if you will, the African Continental Free Trade Agreement being um, uh, the the, the instrument that will create a, a, a common market very much like uh, NAFTA, the EU, and the wealth that's created in the Americas and in Europe as, as a result. And wealth creation is the principal objective, I believe, 
of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. And this is incredibly important because household consumption is expected to grow in the African continent from where it is today to, to 20, uh, 2025, growing at a peg of 3.8%. And the number that isn't often quoted is by the time we get to 2025, household consumption by Africa, by African citizens, will mm -hmm. be in excess of $2.1 trillion. Now, if this is not an, a, an economic opportunity for Canada or any country of, of the world, this is obviously something that, that everyone needs to focus on because the African continent, when it comes to consumer spending, is growing at a peg virtually faster than anywhere else in the world. So from, from where we are today uh, to where consumer spending is growing, this is actually a very good sign. Uh, additionally, uh, business spending, uh, more primarily to import things like capital goods, is going from 2.6 trillion, where it is currently uh, in terms of business spending, and is expected to reach about 3.5 trillion by 2025. Another tremendous opportunity for anyone who uh, wishes to import to the African continent. But those imports, as part of the vision of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, is also a, a vision where the continent is buying goods in bulk. It is getting uh, it is getting the kind of economies of scale of importation that it needs to get the lowest price it can for mm -hmm. the commodities that imports. What has to be behind us are the days of Egypt importing versus Sudan importing versus, versus South Africa importing to a continent that is a, a, an economic block that is basically getting the best deals possible for the continent. Now, the other point that I wanted to speak to, when, you, when I said GDP per capita is less than $2 a day in a large number of African countries, how does re this reconcile with the household consumption expenditures that are increasing at 3.8% per annum to about to get, getting to $2.1 trillion by 2025? The problem Africa has is about 80% of total wealth and consumer spending is concentrated in 11 countries, only in 11 countries of the 55. So when we talk about the $2.1 trillion of household consumption expected by 2025, this is going to be in 11 countries. Mm -hmm. So obviously these are the growth poles of the African continent. And so obviously when you see foreign direct investment, you're going to see foreign direct investment going to where consumption is, either by consumers or for business spending. Now, what we don't want is growth to be uneven. What we don't want is an African continent that is basically bipolar or an African continent where the Gini coefficient of the African continent talks to distortions where you have countries that are extremely wealthy and you have countries that are extremely poor. And this is the direction a non-economic um, uh, block Africa is going. So you're going to have a continent if we keep going at this peg of the haves and the have nots. You'll have the wealthy and you'll have the poor, but you'll also have the countries that are in extreme poverty. And this is what, of course, working with the, the vision of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, the African Development Bank is trying to be impactful. The other statistic I'd like to speak to is that industry, African industry is also taking off. So we expect manufacturing output to almost double from where it is now, which is about 500 million, to get to about 930, uh, 500 billion, to get to about 930 billion by 2025. So it is, it is this industry that has to also operate at a level of economies of scale to be able to compete with the Chinas of the world. It has to enhance the resilience of our economies to make sure that the countries do not depend on one, two, or three primary exports that when commodity markets go down, they are adversely affected. We have to develop wealth we have to make sure that we, the African Continental Free Trade Agreement gets us to a level of wealth, gets GDP to grow in a way 
uh, that that trade promotes wealth, promotes comparative advantage, creates regional value chains, addresses the issue of economies of scale, addresses the issue of import substitution, especially for necessities like imported foodstuffs, creates jobs, and in essence, creates an Africa where GDP isn't just growing, GDP per capita is growing. So just to leave you with this, with this final thought, over the past eight years, the African continent, GD, the African continent's GDP has been growing at a peg of about 3.4%. Some countries that have done very well that have now achieved middle income status, mixed status, have been basically year on year over the past half decade growing between six to eight percent. But if we look at the African continent as a whole, we'll see GDP actually increasing if you're looking at a line chart in a very straight line fashion. But then when you look at GDP per capita in real terms over the last three years, GDP per capita has been going down. So how is it that the African continent is getting wealthier, but on average, the African consumer is getting poorer with the exception of 11 countries where household consumption is growing at over 4%. So it is the African Continental Free Trade Agreement that will allow us to get to a level of parity in growth across the continent, a level of wealth creation, and hopefully unlock the phenomenon where we don't just see GDP growth across the continent, we see GDP growth across the continent at a peg very similar to growth in GDP per capita. The African Continental Free Trade Agreement is not just a concept, it's a vision, and hopefully it is a vision that will empower Africa to be a wealthier Africa and an Africa that will see prosperity like it has never seen before. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much um, for um, your presentation, which I think was uh, very informative um, about the perspective that you, your vision around what the AFCFTA can achieve. And indeed, um, I think this uh, message that you're sharing with us um, of the realities of COVID-19 and juxtaposed with the fundamentals, um, which are the diversity on the continent, the disparities that need to be overcome and the development vision around why Africa is working so hard to create this market. Um, it is about shared prosperity, and I think it's about shared prosperity within the continent, and also not just looking inwards, but looking also at uh, reaching out um, to the rest of the world. So thank you very much for those um, your statement. Unfortunately, we have run out of time. There were some questions in the chat. I'm going to ask the panelists to have a look. And just to mention that uh, there was a question about the role of quality infrastructure, which is important. Commissioner Muchanga alluded to this, and, and it's an important aspect. There was also a question for Commissioner Muchanga about a mechanism. Is there a mechanism for the African diaspora that they may benefit from this free trade agreement? So I'm going to encourage that we deal with that in the chat, because unfortunately, we have exceeded the time allocated. And we have another very exciting panel that um, is going to now um, take place. And may I thank the, um, the speakers in the session, which have compellingly said, yes, there is political commitment to implement the AFCFTA during the COVID-19 area. And more than just the, the reason why that commitment exists has been abundantly shared with us. So thank you very much. We appreciate it. So may I hand over now to my fellow um, moderator, uh, my brother, Nola Kianza, who is um, also our co-host. I think he was the first to speak today. And um, I want to just um, remind those of you who are not connected that he is, in fact, the president of the Corporate Council for Africa and has been a, really a leading light in promoting Canada-Africa relations. And he is really um, the best place to take us over in terms of the business discussion 
and uh, making sure that we balance the political perspective and the policymakers' views and also the realities of what business people think. So thank you, my brother Nola, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, my sister treasurer for, uh, uh, for this opportunity. Dear members and partners uh, of Sisi Africa and those who are listening, what exciting moment. Uh, this is a special time. Let me just uh, mention this. Um, when you have good news, when you have exciting news, who do you tell first? To my note, you go to your best friends. And this is what the leaders have done this morning. We hear from the president of Niger, the leader of uh, African continental free trade. We hear from the secretary general himself. We hear from uh, the commissioner who have been promoting trade. And we just heard from the financial institution, our African Development Bank. And they are all coming to the Canadian business community. You may be asking yourself a question, why? Why Canada? Canada, we have expertise. We have know-how. We have technology. We, we are well-known and respected internationally. This is why our friends are coming to us because they know that Canadians don't go and invade a place. Canadians go out there and create partnership. This is a special opportunity for us as Canadians to listen and to embrace this invitation that we are being given right now to tell us that Africa is open for business. And this is what we have been doing for <clears throat> over 18 years Canadian Council on Africa, we have been telling you about Africa, this vast market. Now the leaders of African countries have come together and open up this market, this vast market. And they are coming to the Canadians because you have technology, you have know-how, you have those machineries that the president just mentioned. You have expertise, we have done it in the area of agriculture. We have done it in the area of FinTech. We have done it in the area of telecommunication. We have done it in the area of infrastructure. We have done it in the area of finances. We have done it in the area of education. We have done it in the area of health. So we can take this to Africa and that's why this message is to us, Canadian companies, to all those who are listening, that the moment is now, that we can seize this moment as this market is opening up that Canadians will be already there. And that's something that I want you to capture on right now. Now, there was a mention of COVID. Let me just mention this, my fellow Canadians. Let's listen to the health authorities. Let's wear those masks. Let's keep distance. Let's get rid of this monster. Let's, let's, let's put it aside because we got to move into business. And the only way we can do this is by us putting this COVID aside. Now, a number of you who are listening for the first time, you are still asking questions, how do we go to Africa? By the way, let me remind you that Ethiopian airline, Ethiopian airline is still flying from Toronto, Canada. You can fly with Ethiopian airline and we'll take you to the continent of Africa. And from there you can move, you can go anywhere you want to go to Africa. So don't ask the question. Yes, you may be saying, but airlines are not moving and there are issues, what do we do? Let me assure you that Ethiopian airline is flying. Remember when we were lacking PPE? Ethiopian airline brought that to us. You know, remember when our people were stranded here and there? Ethiopian airline was there. So let me just mention to you that Ethiopian airline is there and there are other airlines also going to Africa. So don't ask the question, it's just a few hours. You know, some markets are becoming difficult to go out with traditional markets, you know, and here is the African market that is opening up. So that's my message to you as you listen. Now, the panelists that are coming up are going to tell you also in a more tangible way how you can link up with Africa. Now, our first panelist that I'm going to introduce to you 
is uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Asfour, and uh, you are going to listen to her and how she is going to be telling you about uh, uh, business opportunities uh, in Africa. So, Dr. Um, uh, sorry, I'm going to be uh, talking about Dr. Amani. Dr. Amani, that I'm going to be asking to come to speak. And Dr. Amani is a, a business leader, is a businesswoman. She has been the champion, a champion in a business uh, community there, uh, promoting women and youth in business. And she has served as a president of a, a women organization uh, for Mediterranean Congress and Business and Professional Women. Uh, she has been president of International uh, Federation of Business and Professional Women. Uh, she was uh, elected as the first chair of a common market for Eastern and Southern Africa, which is COMESA uh, Business Council. Uh, she has been also secretary general of African Society for Scientific Research and Technology and Vice President of International Federation of Business and Professional Women. Uh, I mean, I can go the list on and on. She has received a number of uh, awards out there. So Dr. Uh, Amani uh, is a woman that is engaged. Uh, one thing that I should mention before I ask her to speak, Africa business is led by women. Our women are the champions. So those who have been asking, how is Africa getting it together are our women? Our women that have been leading. You know, when you talk small businesses are our women. And uh, you will see that in this panel, our women are going to be championing. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me to welcome Dr. Amani. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's my real pleasure to be with all of you. And thank you for the Canadian Council of Africa and for a trade group for such a fantastic opportunity of linking together. Thanks for His Excellency, the President of Niger, Mohamed Yasufu, for leading and championing the Africa Continental Free Trade Area. Thank you for our brother, uh, Ambassador Albert Moshenga, for our uh, Commissioner for Trade and Industry for African uh, Union. And uh, thanks for our, uh, uh, the, our my sister and brother from the AE Trade Group. It is a real pleasure to be here with you representing the private sector, representing the women entrepreneurs, representing the small and medium enterprises of the continent, and really representing all the private sector of Africa. And how can we really mobilize partnership between the African continent and our uh, sisters and brothers from Canada? And even with this COVID, how are we going to do with the COVID? And how is the COVID is a is an opportunity and not a challenge. Uh, just uh, recently, I have just been uh, uh, in several travels, even with COVID. And one of the issues that our International Federation of Business and Professional Women have really uh, have, have several advocacy pillars, which is about entrepreneurship, about empowering women in trade and access to market, about financial inclusion, about women decision making, women on board, digital economy, and innovation. So having said all this, how can our uh, uh, digital economy play a role within the COVID? How can our partnership with our Canadian businesses and the African businesses be an uh, opportunity for our uh, increasing our intra-Africa trade within the continent and also increasing uh, having a big market within the, the African continent and the partnership with the Canadian business uh, business community. It is very important to see that our Africa continental free trade area is really about a made in Africa product. Made in Africa product within the largest continental free trade area. It's an area of opportunity for investment. It's an area of opportunity for industrialization, for joint ventures, for investing in our raw materials within Africa and value addition. So how is it going to be a win-win situation and the partnership as long as our African businesses and our Canadian businesses? 
Uh, it is very important to highlight that the recently launched uh, Sukoku platform, which is really our ownership, it will be like our the Africa electronic platform, it will be like our Amazon, it will be like our Alibaba, but with made in Africa product. How can our uh, Canadian business community, our Canadian business women entrepreneurs come and j make joint ventures with our business women on the continent, with our SMEs on the continent to transfer technology, to invest in value addition, in regional value chains, and to have a strong African product that can be marketed across the whole of Africa and also marketed across the, uh, the, the, the Atlantic for Canadian market and any other markets. If we understand that Africa has the richest content on the world with the natural resources and with its human resources, with women and the youth, having more more youth within the continent, more than 35, uh, more than 65 percent of the continent are less than 35 years, and all our half the society of our women in business, how can we have a business? Uh, uh, opportunities and as I mentioned within our people, business and professional women international and within our Africa business and professional women we have what we call now promoting the business catalog business catalog is clustering our women entrepreneurs in different sectors in different clusters to make sure that we are having all the expertise within the continent in different sectors, whether it's garment, textile, whether it's agriculture, agribusiness, whether it's ICT, whether it is, it's, 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 it's all about the mapping exercise of the existing resources on the continent and how we transform it to be industrialized within the African continent to, in, to boost our intra-Africa trade. So the partnership that is really we are recommending uh, between our African uh, uh, continent and our Can Canadian businesses is to add value to our raw materials within the African continent is to make sure that the industrialization is boosted and we can market our products on the our on the, by digital economy within the Sukuku. The Sukuku Africa, which is recent, recently launched, as my brothers has said before and uh, it is championed and uh, now the sub region the 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 the, 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 south, the southern regional office is uh, based in Eswatini under the patronage of his majesty the king of Eswatini it is very important to know that it is a business to business platform it's a business to client platform it is secures all the payments for all the african continents it makes sure that this sukuku has a strong african product and also matching the the standards and this is one also opportunity between the african and the business community in canada to see how we have a strong product made in africa which matching the international criteria it will be very important for the business community within the Canada to invest into the African continent and to make a product which is strong and meeting the standardization according to international standards. And so it will be open for the international market. It will be open within our 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 uh, our uh, Africa market. We also within the Kuku, Sukuku Africa, we which is, means Suk is a is a market. We have training materials. Training is really this is also an area of opportunity of. Uh, of having a partnership, training to change the mindset, training for leadership, for skills for women entrepreneurs, for the youth. And it is really about the digital economy that we are now within the COVID era has been very important to know how we can promote our products within the digital economy, within a platform that have a secure system, that has information about our trade hubs, information about our trade agreements. It also have information about the procurement uh, 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 opportunities because this is a very important issue with public procurement. We know that in the whole world, the public procurement is $15 trillion. Women have access only to 1%. Now, thanks to our African leaders and thanks to our lobbying as business and professional women in the continent, we have already when I was chairing Commercial Business Council, I have lobbied the heads of states to have a special preferential treatment 
for public procurement for women entrepreneurs and SMEs and Uhuru, uh, President Ihuru Kenyatta in Kenya took an affirmative action to have at least 30% of all government procurement goes to SMEs, women, youth, and people with disabilities. But for our great luck also that the current president of uh, African Union, His Excellency uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, the president of South Africa, in his acceptance speech, he mentioned that at least 30% 30 30 of all government procurement goes to uh, women-owned businesses. And just recently, in August, he took an affirmative action in South Africa that at least 40% of all the government procurement goes to SME to women owned businesses, which is a huge, huge uh, 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 opportunity for all of us on the continent. And even with partnering with our Canadian uh, business community, because if we have this preferential treatment, then we will have to have a uh, build the capacity of our women entrepreneurs on the continent to make sure that they access these standards. So through Sukuku Africa, we'll have this information, we'll have the training materials, which is also very uh, uh, potent to understand that we can set up together business incubators and business development centers where we can have this transfer of technology, we can have the support for the scientific research for our small and medium enterprises to transform to the to our the the the, the African uh, products and make sure that we have a strong African product that we can uh, 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 trade with. So this procurement is a huge uh, uh, change to make sure that within our African continent, not only multinational companies take all the tenders, but our small and medium enterprises, our women and youth. And that's why it is a huge opportunity for investment in the African continent to see how our Canadian partners, our Canadian uh, uh, business community uh, make these joint ventures, transfer technology, promote industrialization within the African continent, make sure to invest in the, the regional value chains. And so when we do this, we uh, uh, we can trade within the African continent and also trade with our partners within the, 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 the Canadian uh, businesses. So it is very important that all this seminar is really promoting our partnership as as uh, uh, Africa and, uh, and, uh, and Canada and connects all the stakeholders to make sure that we boost our intra Africa trade through this investment. We build the capacity of industrialization, as my brother Albert Poshenka, Ambassador uh, Chair uh, Commissioner, said, because it, the African continent is full of and rich of natural resources that we need transfer of technology in order to, 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 to transform it to a strong African product. It is the, the it has all the resources within its uh, the continent, which which really uh, makes it very very valuable for our uh, uh, partners in order to come and invest. It is very also important to understand that within our marketing strategies and the outreach. Uh, within the business communities, the business councils, the, Af the manufacturer association, the, 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 the private sector federation within the continent, we have these important uh, linkages of the regional organizations that can make sure that we uh, invest in the, in the women and youth. And that's why also within next year in the intra-Africa trade, uh, the EA Trade Group is sponsoring, as uh, Ambassador Moshenga said, 150 youth. Half of them will be women because this is the criteria of having gender balance and making sure that these youth have already made a business on the continent. They have already uh, industrialized something within also within focus areas of green economy. They have already business uh, opportunities within the, 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 the technological era and the fourth industrial revolution. Those 150 youths who are going to be sponsored for next year will be, those are the future of Africa. So it is also a very important opportunity that Canadian business community can come and share with us as external partners in the intra-Africa trade fair that will take place in Rwanda next year and make sure to uh, invest within the continent and to make this mapping exercise and the networking with our business community, small and medium enterprises. 
So uh, having uh, had this, I am so happy to be with all of you and uh, so happy to see how our Sukuku Africa could be the platform that all of uh, our, our products will be in. And I just want to end uh, in this fantastic uh, webinar, uh, African proverb, which says, if you want to go fast, you go alone. If we want to go far, we go together. So all of us as partners, we go together and we are very excited to see how our Canadian business community can partner with us and achieving the sustainable development goal number 17 of global partnership. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, my sister, Dr. Amani. Uh, this was uh, powerful. Uh, I, I think uh, this is uh, showing uh, what's going on in the continent. Now, as you mentioned with Sokuku, so you don't need uh, to, to wait until you go on the continent. You can link on Sokuku and know uh, about the product and you can be able to advertise and to uh, demonstrate and to share information on electronic platform. Oh. I mean, look at the time that we are in. I think this is an excellent platform here, and we'll be talking more about it uh, in, uh, at the end. I think uh, I would like uh, our Canadian companies to take an advantage to go to look at uh, Sokuku platform and look at how you can be able to take advantage of this platform. Uh, this is what AE Trade is bringing to you, is uh, to create a digital platform so that you can be able to communicate even by being here in Canada. I mean, of course, you can always fly there. Now, our next speaker is uh, our uh, chairman, Beno Lasalle. Now, we have asked him to come to speak. I mean, Beno is already introduced. As I mentioned, uh, he's uh, um, an executive of uh, many, many, many companies uh, that are operating in Africa. He has been champion for decades. Um, Beno, can you tell us a little bit on uh, what uh, do you think about uh, this whole uh, Africa uh, and uh, continental free trade area as a businessman? Uh, what are your thoughts that you can share it with other Canadian companies? Thank you, Nola, uh, for the intro. Uh, look, I, I think the opportunity is great. And, and, and I think that we, uh, we need to be selective in, in the industry we enter. Uh, as you know, I, I have been in mining for 25 years in Africa and mining requires a lot of time, a lot of capital. Uh, you have to be a little bit lucky in finding the right deposit and you have to have the market timing. I don't think we should recommend that to our, our, our participants. I mean, if you are in, 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 in mining supply, sure, you know, contact all the Canadian or all the mining companies, that, that's fine. Energy, we are in energy, we build solar power plants. That takes years. It takes years of negotiation with the power purchase agreement. This takes a lot of time. It's, it's, it's again, something that's, that's doable, but I don't think that's a post-COVID-19 strategy. To me, and I'll go back, I sound like a broken record. I think the, the most demanding sector is agriculture. Agriculture does not require a lot of capital. It, does, it creates a lot of jobs. And it takes care of the open market. I mean, you know, if we produce gold and silver as we do, or uranium in Niger, uh, we're not selling that to Uganda or to, uh, to uh, the, the DRC. We're selling that into Europe or into the North American market. So that, that free trade agreement doesn't do much. But if you're producing bananas or cacao or cotton, and well, you don't need to ship it to Pakistan to be, to be clean and sold. You can ship it to Ethiopia. You know that you're a great fan of Ethiopia. We all know that. And, and that's the reality is we need to take what we produce in Africa and ship it into Africa. And, and hence, to me, the, the, the low hanging fruit here, and it's, 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 it's a funny expression, it's agriculture. I mean, as I said, if any of you have been to Niger and you drive along the Niger River, there's so much water and so little agriculture. And if you go to Mali, where the, the Niger River is, there's no agriculture or very little around that, 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 that the, the amazing amount of water. And what's the problem with agriculture? You, we, what do you need? Sun and water. 
and 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 so and, and, and it's not developed so if I am a Canadian entrepreneur and I'm saying, okay, well, you know, I have an expertise in, in tomatoes or I have an expertise in blueberries or in, in strawberries. And, uh, you know, Dr. Amani knows, I mean, in Egypt, the, the amount of strawberry they produce for the European market is, is, is mind boggling. And, and, and you know what? That, that, that you can create an economy by developing your agriculture. And that's what Ufouet Boigny said in, 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 in Ivory Coast when he was in power. He said, we don't need to develop the mining sector because that will come. We need to develop agriculture. And look, I mean, the, the economy that they have and they're beside Ghana, which also has a very strong economy. So my saying to everybody is, sure, you can look at mining. Sure, you can look at energy. You can look at, at you know, uh, uh, being the, the, you know, the internet provider. Sure, you can do all that. But if you want to go in, make a difference, do it very quickly. Agriculture transformation, but, you know, you can be in many phases of agriculture, but that's that's to me the easiest place to start. Uh, I have to say that for anybody who wants to go in, the Canadian embassies, our Canadian ambassadors are doing an amazing job with their trade commissioners. I mean, we are operating, I don't know, 10, 12 countries over there, and we know all of them on a personal name basis. It is extremely important. We just, uh, you know, took over some uh, some assets in Morocco recently. And who do we work with? The Canadian Embassy, the Bureau du Québec, uh, the Trade Commissioners, and it's been an amazing and smooth integration into Morocco uh, in 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 uh, in managing some assets. So the reality is, we are well equipped with the Canadian embassies and the Trade Commissioners. They have also opportunities that they've identified. And I think now it's a matter of us selecting what area we want to go. Is it Comesa? Is it South Africa? Is it Central Africa, like Carol will talk about uh, with the DRC? And, uh, or is it West Africa? But at the end of the day, the embassies are there. The trade commissioners are there. And again, one third of the land is, is in production at one third if efficacy. It's the largest market ever to come. And and just the end of the story, a friend of mine was in mining in Ivory Coast and she tripped over cashew nut plantation, started to manage that with the cooperative. And now they'll be one of the largest producer of cashew nuts. And you know why cashew nuts? Because everybody's going vegan. I'm sure Carol will tell us about the vegan. People are going vegan. Well, vegan cashew nuts, you make ice cream, you make milk, you make everything. And Ivory Coast will become a very, very large provider of cashew nut to the planet. And someone from mining went into this and now she's leading, I think the largest, uh, one of the largest company anyway in cashew nuts in all of West Africa. So there you go, this there, you just need to be there, have an idea, but again, to me, stick to agriculture. That's the low capital entry point, efficient, and it creates the maximum amount of job, which is what we need. I will be short and that will be my comment, Nola. Thank you very much, uh, Benoit. Uh, I think uh, that that's to the point. I mean, from the, the mining company, and I know that mining company do employ many people and you have to feed those people. So really agriculture, as you said, that is key, is key. I mean, uh, you are to that other sectors like uh, FinTech and all those technologies that have been mentioned, uh, definitely agriculture, talking of which, if you have not registered yet, tomorrow we have another webinar, which is going to be focusing on agriculture in Burkina Faso. So Burkina Faso is a tomorrow, please register today because it's going to be talking about agriculture. L'agriculture and l'élevage. Uh, this is very key. Bring technology, bring know-how. So that's, that's happening tomorrow. Thank you very much, Benoit, for your comments. And uh, now I'm going to move to telecommunication. I mean, you cannot, you cannot do business without telecommunication. I mean, you can see it right now. Without telecommunication, without the phones, without all this, we cannot do anything. And we have a privilege to have uh, the, uh, the chief executive officer of uh, MTN Swatini that is with us here. As you know, MTN is one of the largest telecommunication companies in Africa. Uh, MTN offers voice data, digital services to retail customers in 21 countries in Africa. 
So this is this is very big. MTN offers enterprise solution to corporate and public sectors customers in total of 23 countries. So um, uh, I, I think we need uh, mostly today we need MTN. I think we need uh, uh, like-minded companies like that, and we are we have a big privilege to have uh, the CEO of MTN, uh, Mr. Um, Muchali. Um, uh, who is uh, CEO of uh, MTN to speak with us, uh, Wandile Muchali. Uh, we welcome you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nola, and good afternoon and good morning, everyone. Um, Your Excellencies and all protocol observed. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, Nola, uh, given to us to speak to you uh, in this webinar. Um, I think it's really an, an honor and a privilege. Uh, to speak with esteemed uh, guests uh, today. And again, to greet our Canadian um, um, partners who are going to uh, be more interested about what is happening in our kingdom as well as within the African continent. So it's really a pleasure to, to speak to you uh, this afternoon. I, I think first of all, um, um, I, I think a lot of uh, points have been raised, uh, Nola, uh, especially around you know, the infrastructure that is available in, 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 in Africa and in particular in Eswatin. And I think for us, what is very key as private partners and private sector is to give the assurance that we do have the infrastructure that is capable of doing and delivering the first world experience that our partners will have in Europe, in Canada, in America, everywhere. We do have that technology that is here. So we are just reaffirming that as, as, as the kingdom of Eswatin that whenever our partners um, want to invest in Africa and want to invest in the kingdom of Eswatini, we are here and we are ready. And like uh, it has been said earlier on, Africa is open for business, Eswatini is open for business. So whoever the partners uh, need uh, any uh, connectivity requirements, ICT requirements, we are definitely ready and we are here uh, to give that uh, service. And it's very important, uh, Nola, to say that um, as soon as the infrastructure is there and we've created the base, it becomes then uh, important for investors because they, those are some of the things that they, imperatives that they look at when they come and invest. They look at all of these uh, areas and, and ICT and telecommunication in particular is very, very important. And, and so we are just uh, here to confirm that we as a Swatin, we as Africa have developed all the technologies. Yeah, I, I, right now, if you look at where Africa is and, and see, seeing um, the development in technology, most of African, African countries are already uh, talking 4G. Uh, some of them are already migrating to 5G technology, which is what the first world is experiencing. So certainly we are, we are getting there uh, with regards to uh, making sure that we can offer the best services uh, in as far as telecommunication is provided uh, in, in, in the country. And, 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 and maybe just to add uh, again, um, um, Nola and, and your excellencies is, and, and our partners is that uh, one of the things that has been spoken about um, here in this forum is around uh, digital uh, currencies and, and digital uh, connectivity, digital transformation. And, and, and as much as um, uh, we're talking about e-commerce as well, um, we in Swatini have had the privilege uh, and the pleasure of welcoming um, the commissioner and, and the AE trade uh, team, uh, where his majesty the king uh, actually launched it here in the kingdom of Eswatini. So we've got the first hand experience around the AE trade. And so really this is a platform that has been developed for uh, Africa. It is developed that it enables the e-commerce, it enables the connectivity uh, within the entire African continent. So you can do business in Eswatini and be able to do a transaction with uh, other African countries throughout the continent. So it is really a privilege for us to have been involved in making sure that the AE trade is going to be successful. So this is a, a success story that we are bringing in as Africans. And I believe that strongly uh, our partners, when they invest in, in Africa, they'll be able to understand that there's a digital currency that will be able to move uh, in between and be able to pay for commodities, pay for services throughout the continent of, North of Africa. And it's where we're playing a really major role. If you look at the statistics uh, um, in, in, in Africa, NOLA, and looking at what mobile money has achieved, um, in, in, in the recent past, you realize that mobile money 
Um, in, in, if you look at last year, I think if you look at the statistics, they've transacted what over six six hundred billion dollars uh, just within the, uh, the African continent itself. So it gives you an indication that we have got the the, the technology, we've got the, the the means of which we can be able to transact uh, mobile money across the African continent. A lot of African uh, countries today are now uh, talking about international remittances which enables you to be able to pay for services and pay for your goods uh, wherever you are in the country that we're in and be able to transact and send money across the African continent. So again, this is enabling uh, our investors that whenever they invest probably in Eswatini, they can be able to buy and commodities across the continent and be able to pay for it uh, using the digital uh, platforms that are available. So it really, it is exciting that we are already saying in Africa, we are ready to, to get into this uh, uh, platform and be able to welcome uh, um, our, our partners who will invest and have the confidence that we do have uh, the platforms that are available in, in the African continent. I think also what is important, uh, Nola, is the fact that this enablement from, from, from the AE trade is, is just basically saying it, it opens up for, for the, the rest of African continents and a lot of people that are living below the poverty line. Uh, it is an opportunity for them to get into business and understand that they can have a, a products and services in their own country and be able to sell it across uh, the borders, across the, the abroad and be able to get paid uh, as, 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 as in the currency that they prefer in. So, uh, what 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 we are saying is that it is time now to allow Af Af Africa to grow. It is time now to Af allow Africa to well to get to a level where we we lift the standard of living, we lift the literacy of our people, as well as making sure that people are now uh, in in Africa not living below the poverty line, but able to get into those first world uh, country status. So really, it is something that we as MTN uh, and Eswatin are proud to say. We are ready, we've developed the network. Um, our network coverage today was sitting at one of the best that I'm sure in Africa, we're sitting just over 99% network coverage across the country. So wherever you are, you, you have um, uh, the nation be able to connect. And we are, we've got this um, strategy as MTN to say, we are transforming and creating a digital uh, a country. And so when we're creating a digital uh, continent as well. So it is important for us to make sure that digital transformation is going to happen across the, the continent of, of Africa. So really it's a pleasure and thank you for giving us this opportunity. It's just to reaffirm uh, to our cabinet and friends that we have got the technology, we are ready and we've been doing it, like I'm saying so much that transactions that are going through in our networks and the, and, the, and the expansions of the networks are going every every year. Some of the things that have come through, Enola, is, and, and I've seen some of the statistics that have come through around the cost of communication in, in Africa. It's really gone down. And I think with, in, in, with, with the advent of um, um, uh, all this, uh, the underground sea uh, connections and making sure that the, the cost of uh, bandwidth has reduced. So the cost of actually a producing of, of data in, in, in Africa has really gone down. So it really, it is really not a barrier anymore. When you come through and you, you invest in the, in the kingdom or you invest in Africa, you are sure that you're going to get the best value uh, for money and making sure that you do not really pay exorbitant amounts, uh, which will then become a barrier to, to investors. So really we've addressed, I think, the full spectrum around uh, connectivity, around digital transformation, and as well as the enablement uh, of, of uh, e-trade and e-commerce uh, in Africa. Thank you very much, Nola. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much uh, for uh, those words uh, of assurance. It was mostly today where we are, we need uh, the digital connections. So, uh, I mean, we have been talking about the agriculture here. I mean, uh, uh, with this connection, you have just mentioned the area of uh, uh, FinTech where uh, transaction can be done, which means people can be able to order fresh banana, fresh cocoa, fresh coffee, uh, produce from Africa, and also people can do business uh, uh, connecting, uh, you know, digitally, um, electronically, you can do business, you can showcase technologies advancing, and I'm very pleased to hear that uh, Africa, we are up there, and uh, we are keep improving in that space. Thank you very much, and uh, definitely um, uh, that's something that uh, the companies uh, want to hear. And now I'm going to move to um, uh, 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 our other 
Our panelists, you hear her name being uh, mentioned, Carol Robert, who is a uh, founder and CEO, uh, the, uh, the, the chairman of uh, BDR uh, Foundation and uh, president and CEO of uh, Pharma African. Uh, she is a businesswoman that is well known here in Canada and in Africa. Uh, she has been spending uh, the, uh, operating in Africa for 15 years. Now, I should mention that uh, Carol used to be uh, the chairman of the board uh, of the directors uh, of the World Trade Center in Montreal. So she understands the business here in Canada. But uh, the, the last 15 years, she has been spending time uh, in Africa where she is touching a sector that uh, is very, very crucial, which is uh, the agriculture sector, uh, working with um, uh, Ecopreneur that uh, helping these small and uh, uh, farmers uh, to move up to uh, commercial farming uh, to uh, to help the people with better structure, better agriculture, and uh, produce a product. As you know, a number of products that uh, if we look at in the agriculture side is uh, in, in the medical space. Uh, and uh, Carol has opened that niche um, of uh, the medical space where uh, for the first time there's going to be, a, you know, uh, 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 the medication being produced in Africa. Uh, so she has been a champion. She is a visionary, and um, it is a pleasure to have Carol with us. Carol, tell us how your projects in Africa right now. When you hear about AE trade, when you hear about African Continental Free Trade Agreement, you as a Canadian that is working in Africa who is looking at this sector that is very key that Benoit mentioned, sector of agriculture. How do you see this? Uh, what are the words that you can mention to ad, uh, other Canadian companies? Carol? Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Nola, for a, such a warm uh, introduction. I'm just honored. I also want to thank uh, AE Trade and the Canadian Council for Af of Africa uh, for putting together this conference. It is a major opportunity to discuss something that is extremely important. Before going into my presentation, I'd like also to thank the Excellencies, the President of Niger for chairing this conference. Uh, his interest in what we're doing is just extremely important and inspirational. Also, I'd like to thank all the participants, the dignitary and the participants from Canada and from Africa, because this is all about what we're doing right now. Uh, we're connecting Africa to Canada and reverse. So let's me talk about a little bit more. Okay, what is uh, we're doing right now is we are building an African economy with training African entrepreneurs so they can operate their African enterprises, which is a small and medium sized enterprises. We are right now doing a shift from the traditional agriculture, which is mainly peasant and artisanal to a professional agriculture which respect the international standard from the production and the transformation. And uh, we went over that. And not only we are training them and assist them into the launch of their eco enterprises, but also we, we, we connect uh, the ecopreneur with, uh, we provide them access to the transformation uh, of their agricultural production, would it be in oil, in essential oil, in different product, semi-finished product that can be exported uh, for clients in the regional and the African market and also to the, uh, the world market. But this was not enough. We also put a division called BAS, Botanical Alliance for Sustainable Supply, which use a liaison for the uh, African ecopreneur to, sorry, uh, to uh, access to the market. And we also had to create a division for the African ecopreneur to access to the startup financing. So this shift from the agricultural, uh, arti the uh, artisanal agriculture to the professional agriculture is extremely uh, vital to create local economy. And this is where we had been selected by numerous country as a post COVID priority program because not only we provide local job, local SME creation, but also those SME, those African SME can produce quality control health uh, products that are needed in, in, in the pandemic, but also they are 
playing a, an important role into the food security and the food supply chain. So uh, this is quite a, a, a different a change from what we were seeing in the past, where the only one that were doing business and making uh, money were the transformation uh, organization or the landowner. So we want to shift those benefits to have for the ecopreneur to access to the benefit. So it is a very different uh, perspective on the value chain and is very profitable to bring alive the formal economy, create thousands of jobs. And of course, all those companies, you can understand how natural the fit is with the AE trade and the, the platform, the Sukuku platform, because all those ecopreneurs going to benefit a large deal with access to the, the, the AE trade platform. It's going to bring them the, the, the capability to, to, uh, to connect with the, the continental market and uh, into this uh, time where the internet and the e-commerce is booming. I just cannot say how much I'm uh, impressed and and excited about what EE Trade is providing has access by this platform to all the ecopreneurs that are now in the process to uh, launch in several country. Uh, right now, we are uh, moving on implementing the BDA program, which has started in DRC into the five uh, region of the African continent. So we have a, a program in development in uh, Western Africa in Eastern Africa, in uh, North Africa, and in Western Africa. Uh, of course, having started it in DRC, I'd like to thank, uh, address a special thank to the African Bank of Development who have financed our first step a long time ago in DRC. Up to a point that recently, and I'm proud to announce that, that we have been selected by the National Agriculture Ministry and the African Development Bank to be one of the fifth national DRC incubator because we operate as a national because we get implemented nationally. So uh, this, uh, this program is called PEJAB, P-E-J-A-B, which means Programme Entrepreneuriat des Jeunes en Agri-Business. This PEJAB program is expanding in other different countries and is giving a demonstration how strong the uh, commitment for uh, developing uh, agriculture and job and in industrialization, local industrialization into the agriculture is a main uh, uh, priority right now in Africa. Also, I'd like to, to uh, talk about the COVID situation um, because uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, we are addressing so much uh, priority uh, we are working right now with several presidential entity in order to implement the BDA program into their uh, emergency national priority program. So all of that uh, give a, a, an idea that uh, time has come to make a shift into the agriculture thinking, bring professionalism into the, the production, and move from this peasant agriculture to a more formal SME oriented local African SME producing and transforming among the quality international quality standard. So I don't want to go too far, but I think that uh, this essential message is the core message that I want to share. And uh, I, I'm very happy that we have the occasion to network with the high level organization, um, uh, national governments and uh, multilateral donor and bilateral dollar, dollar donors to implement locally those programs by create, which create uh, hundreds and hundreds of entrepreneurs, SME and thousands of jobs. So thank you for giving me the chance to address to this uh, audience. I make a point for being short, <laughs> and thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Carol. Uh, definitely, you are going to be a busy uh, woman on the continent of Africa. As you know, 60% uh, of arable land is still on that continent. 
and mm -hmm. uh, the need uh, for food, um, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, food processing, food distribution, uh, bringing food to the market, uh, organize people to, to be in a more commercial way is, uh, is greatly needed. So you, um, uh, your expertise, uh, what you are bringing is going to be very, very key on the continent. And I'm quite sure a lot of people that are following from various countries are following carefully and um, uh, you'll be busy, you'll be getting emails from people, inviting you all over the continent to uh, make sure that uh, we get the program going. Now, um, uh, not uh, uh, last or least, but um, we, um, my next speaker is uh, Treasurer Mupanga, who uh, you, has been already introduced. Uh, our sister uh, has been a champion in the business and she is now acting chief operating officer of AE Trade. Uh, I think uh, she is uh, in, the, in the center of all this. Uh, uh, can you give us uh, your, your message? Why do you think Canadian companies should take this very serious? Um, thank you very much for that um, opportunity to say a few words. Canadian companies, I think, from this webinar will see the goodwill and the welcoming message coming from the African continent, not just only from the private public sector leaders, but also from the private sector. And as a member of the private sector um, and working under the visionary leadership of our CEO and chairman, Muluwalem Seom, what I can say is that one of the opportunities that is unlocking um, right now is a new way of thinking in terms of how we work together um, to take advantage of business opportunities. It is basically three words collaboration, collaboration, collaboration. Because in this world that is so complex and changing so fast, I can imagine for some of our Canadian counterparts, they might be excited, but also a bit scared <laughs> to say, where, where do we start? Who do we talk to? So what we are building together in our partnerships with uh, Canadian Council for Africa, with BDA Foundation and other Canadian counterparts, is really um, a, a platform that will enable us to nurture and build trusting professional relationships that have a long-term focus. We're not in this to get in and make some money quickly and get out. We are builders of a new way of doing business together. And I think this is the refreshing moment that we can pause and think. Um, why is it that the successful nations, you find public and private sectors working together, speaking almost the same language? It is because we are complementary. We need each other. So I want to just say that AU Trade has invested um, a great deal in setting up a network of partnerships across the continent. We continue to do this. We are reaching institutions that work on quality standards, institutions that work in specific sectors like leather, specific sectors like agriculture. We've just heard um, a perfect example. And basically, and institutions that are working on policy and regulatory issues so that that we can be at the pulse of understanding the changes that are happening. And I just want to say briefly, within the AU Trade Group um, system, there are so many opportunities that one could talk about, but I just want to focus on one, which is education and skills and capacity building. You have heard it, 1.27 million people on the continent. There's an estimated 95 to 96 million MSMEs, micro, small and medium-sized enterprises. The opportunities for us to work on delivering quality and relevant learning materials to the education sector, to the business sector is enormous. But I want to pause and say, why not look at the public sector also? Because with civil service transformation, which many of the governments are pushing, moving forward with, an e-government that is shifting from the traditional way of delivering services to the digital, that is also an, another enormous area for us to work on. So I want to just say briefly, because we, I know that time is not on our side. My key takeaway message that I want to leave 
our um, uh, colleagues who are working in Canada looking either with experience in doing a, a business in Africa, looking at shifting sectors or wondering what is best. We are basically rolling out a, a public good, this platform that is going to help to make it easier for distribution and logistics, for payment systems that are going to be integrated. And our model is inclusive. So in other words, people will compete based on the quality of services they provide, but it will be an open system, open source that makes it possible for us to grow together. So I want to end there and say, um, Nola, there is so much that one could say, but just to say that partnerships are key, building trust, and working together, governments and the private sector. And this is the ecosystem we want to bring with our Canadian partners. And why not have an institutionalized Canada Africa Business Forum? That is going to be a constant platform that we can continue to engage. This is the inspiration I'm learning from this because you have been doing a great job in organizing various conversations. But what, what about a conversation where the private sector in Africa that is has this vision to build the continent and take advantage of the FCFTA, the private sector in Canada that wants to do the same, to have a platform where they can engage with our policy makers on a structured basis, on a basis to unlock and deal with the challenges that they find as they are implementing on the ground. This is my inspiration. So thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much, my sister, uh, Treasurer. Uh, this, is, uh, this is exciting. Definitely your inspiration, we embrace it. We embrace it as uh, Africa in the direction that we are moving now. Uh, there is no choice than to engage those dialogues because Canadian companies, our small and medium companies here in Canada are looking to partners on the ground that they can work with. They want mm -hmm. to connect with companies so that they can share their technology, their know-how, their mm -hmm. expertise. They need partners on the ground. So definitely we need to have this dialogue. And are these partners on the ground that are going to be talking about this vast market because when you go to a country, if I go to Swatini, Swatini is going to tell me, listen, um, around us, we can go to other countries. We can go to Namibia. We can go to South Africa. We can go to Mozambique. We can go to across the continent. So we need Canadian companies need the partners on the ground. This is why I'm inviting, I'm inviting people uh, from the diaspora. People from the diaspora in Canada or those who are following all over the, uh, the, the world, I'm asking you, this is your time. This is the time to reach out to our fellow Canadians that may not know much about Africa, don't know how to go. And you know where are those technologies, uh, where the expertise, reach out, hold hands, bring them to the continent. The time is now. And given that the, 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 the time is gone, let me just conclude by saying this. I want to thank you on behalf of AE Trade and Canadian Council on Africa, uh, the president of Niger and uh, the, the leader of uh, African continental free trade area for coming out and sharing with us this strong message. And thank you also to uh, the secretary general of uh, African continental free trade area and the commissioner of African Union and also the vice president of African Development Bank all our panelists that has been there, you have taken time to come to tell us how important this market is. And I can see um, our participants uh, are still there and are listening passionately. And I'm very excited about this. Uh, I'm very, very pleased about this. So let me bring to your attention that uh, uh, this is not the end. As I mentioned, tomorrow we have another webinar which is going to be talking about Burkina Faso. And this uh, webinar is going to be led by the Prime Minister of Burkina Faso himself and with uh, his ministers of agriculture and also uh, the minister of um, the, the um, uh, elevage or animal. So uh, uh, I'm going to ask you uh, to sign up, please, because this is, this is, and we'll be going country by country. 
This is what CC Africa we are going to do to help you discover country by country. And AE Trade is going to help us with uh, the Sokoku platform that has been mentioned and the AE Trade platform. Uh, this is exciting time. So we are very, very pleased that you have joined us and take time to be with us. We thank you very much for your time and uh, please stay connected. Go to aetrade.com uh, website, go to Sokoku website, go to CC Africa website. All these events uh, is uh, on our social media, on the YouTube. You can re-listen it if you want again. You can click on the link and you can listen to this, um, uh, all the messages that you have here today. So we thank you very much for your time and we wish you uh, the best day. Please, please <coughs> put the mask. Mm. Stay away from COVID. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you to everyone. It was an honor to be participating.